365 shake my hands and uh good morning good afternoon good evening ladies and gentlemen wherever you are uh welcome to another weekly forecast of the forex market stock market crypto markets i'm going to cover everything in this particular video um so this is going to be one of my most you know crucial uh war rooms because we, we're coming off back of a big market drop we're literally running off real data cpi data has come out uh, this past wednesday we've seen real market expectations rising and so i would urge you to actually sit through this entire war room see the signals that are mapping out and actually take the trades all right we've had a very very good year um real quick there's nothing wrong with your screen or your internet right <laughs> my, I, i'm filming this in gray scale so kind of like black and white because my eyes are so red uh, it's been a long day i'm actually filming this at 12 30 a.m on the 17th so saturday early morning because i won't be around to to kind of like do this on the sunday right but i think next week is going to be a brilliant trading week we've got fomc coming up we've got a lot of things coming up that i'd like to talk to you guys about in this particular video now the pairs i've chosen for this particular war room are unique because um they, they reflect both some swing setups that most of us should already be in uh, potential new entries on those swing setups but also all the pairs that i've put up together today have a complete alignment with the day trading series i've been doing on the channel so if you're a day trader and you're not looking into swing trade um, um then you might want to see the long term you know trade which is what we do don't forget in these war rooms i just tell you where i'm going to be buying and selling assets explaining why using supply and demand smart money analysis and trying to maintain that very high win rate that we have as 365 all the links are down below if you want to join us which you should uh you know look to register as soon as possible if you want to join our public free telegram group it's somewhere down there and i'm just excited so the first thing i really want to talk about is the impact of cpi on sunday that's number one but also you know what this actually means for the markets remember the market in general sometimes specifically the stock market but overall the market is intrinsic value to human beings is that it is a futuristic tool so it's literally trying to price in the future and we're simply trading assets as closely aligned to that path so we can become profitable that's all trading is clear speculation based on good market analysis with clear technical reading and trade as a psychology that's free of fear guilt you know resentment towards money that can execute trades according to rules a rule-based system that's generally all we are doing here on this particular channel now cpi dropped on wednesday and the first thing i want to say to you is out of 67 67 economic experts right remember you know you know you know and i really want to clarify this because i've been very negative about data i've been very negative about you know you know you know the, the 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 spectrum of the markets i've been very clear we're going to recession before we got into recession i've defended the recession when the feds denied it and and i'm maintaining that path because i am still very very much on the you know 10-year plan and this is the last decade so i expect to see more pain i expect to see some covid demands being met right until that happens i don't think i'll change my perception as being a bear and if you've been on this channel for just over a month you will see that the rewards of being a bear in 2022 outweigh any type of bullish notion you might have all right so 86 percent of all the trades i've taken this year have been sell trades according to my trading journal 86 percent all right and it's not surprising that out of those 86 percent i'm still retaining a very 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 high win rate right a very very high win rate because i am selling with that macro uh, structure meeting those mid-term time swings day to weeks and also in even my short-term trading right so it's a clear golden thread of, of, of a financial flow of money but 67 experts from bloomberg failed right only one expert got cpi prediction correct and i find that so crazy and interesting but scary at the same time now i'm about to break down cpi we're going to read the report please don't get bored it's very important we're going to map out signals i want to go through about 25 trading pairs right so there's a lot of free money that i'm about to give out of this channel but it is important you understand why why is this so shocking well because out of 67 economic experts 
only one of them. An, an economist works for Bloomberg based in a German bank uh, accurately predicted CPI data. Now, why did markets fall on Wednesday? CPI, yes, was uh, an indication that inflation was higher than expected. I want you to understand this. It was higher than expected. But overall, CPI showed that inflation is coming down, you know, a little bit. So three reports ago, when inflation was at 9.1%, inflation peaked. All right. We spoke about this. Then the next inflation reading came, the next CPI reading came, and it showed that inflation was actually dropping. So we spoke about that too. And now the expectation for the CPI report that dropped this past Wednesday, right, was that the drop was going to be even further. There was going to be more drop. And what we got was a, 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 a slight drop from the previous report, but not deep enough as expected. I want you to understand that. So there is inflation dropping and it's caused by a couple of things. Oil price dropped the previous month, blah, blah, blah. You know, all, all these mitigating factors. But the reason why markets are in a panic is because actually our global economies are still not hitting these numbers right. And so naturally the markets panicked, right? And only one, only one economist was bearish enough to say actually inflation is going to, you know, you know, no, no, disappoint. Which is wild because I have a channel of less than 500 subscribers on YouTube right now. And I literally drew out a graph on my whiteboard. I told that the CPI was going to hit uh, to, to miss, explain my rationale behind it. And it's not that hard to pick these things up, right? So markets fell because we did not get the expectation. Inflation is coming down, but it's coming down at a slower rate. Also, because the inflation's come down at a slower rate, there is a high risk of inflation actually picking up again. So what's happening right now is markets are moving out of fear. Why is that important? Because now we know what markets are pricing in. This week, uh, as this war room drops, remember this war room is, is technically speaking for the week that starts on the 19th of September up until the 23rd. And somewhere in that week, the FOMC, Fed Powell, is going to show up to give us an interest rate conference. We assume that we're either going to get a 75 basis point rate hike. I think that's completely you know, agreeable that nothing smaller than 75 basis point rate will happen. There is slighter fear that it might just go full 100 basis point. But right now, the, 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 the consensus in the market is we're definitely getting 75 basis point. Right? And that fear is derived from the fact that this September, the Fed was supposed to be sloppy, slowing down. This September was supposed to be the end of pain, according to some people, not me on this channel. Right. A lot of the a lot of people in the world, a lot of economists, a lot of investors, a lot of small, medium, big banks all assumed that there was going to be something called a Fed U-turn. Right. And that's not happening anymore because the data is starting to show that there is absolutely a need for more pain to come. That is to demand more demand to slow down spending in the economy because of such and such. Right. So because of the reasons I've explained. Right. So I, I want to quickly first dive into that aspect of the report very quickly because this is what is going to influence our setups right so i'm still a bear and i'm justifying why right so don't forget to like share subscribe um, um it's absolutely important guys let's get this channel to a thousand subscribers it's absolutely shocking that a number of people on the channel who watch these videos but are unsubscribed absolutely shocking so definitely feed what feeds you. If this channel feeds you, if this channel helps you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it's absolutely, absolutely crucial. And I appreciate that. Right. So let me just quickly pop um, um, the, 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 the CPI data straight from, you know, Forex Factory slash, you know, the, the, the Labor Statistics Department. So we can quickly look at exactly what's cooking in this report. Right. Right, so you can see for yourself, there we go. We've got the consumer index price summary. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole report. Um, I, I literally already highlighted, you know, all the kind of things that I think would be absolutely, you know, crucial and important for us to kind of like go through. So just real quick, because, you know, this is actually fascinating. If you especially if you've been following the stuff that I said the last time I pulled out a CPI report, 
uh, on this channel the last time I actually broke down exactly what it was that I was seeing. This is incredibly fascinating, right? So the uh, um, 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 and I think you know it's well worth again noting um, um, that you know all these things I kind of like said before, right? So. The, the first thing you're going to notice is the increase in shelter, shelter, right? This is rent. This is housing. And I keep telling you guys, a housing crash is coming. We covered it first last year, November, right? The Evergrande crisis, the seven trillion US dollar crisis in China that's going to sweep the floor. If you look at the US ten year chart, US ten year treasury chart, um, after the CPI kind of like data came out, right? That thing is going crazy. That is more pain for housing. If you think back to 2008. A liquidity crisis where the markets completely crashed was finally triggered by a housing crash, right? Now, now listen to this. This is the CPI data. Increase in shelter, food, and medical care indexes were the largest of many contributors to broad-based monthly all items increase, right? So pause. What this means is, listen, when power comes up this Wednesday, Thursday, and he's trying to meander through, he needs to accept. Powell now has no choice but to accept that inflation isn't being pushed by one thing. The one thing, March, April, May, June, was oil. That, that was the one thing, according to them, the experts, the experts, right? According to them, it was oil. Oil hit a supply, oil has been falling. I've covered that on my social media pages. I've covered that, you know, on my on my Twitter, on my Instagram, that actually, you know, I also actually drank from the same juice, right? I, I started feeding sentiment into my brain and almost ignored clear supply and demand. Oil has been falling, right? And while they were blaming oil for the rise of inflation, as if to say, once we get a handle on oil, once we fix that Ukraine crisis, right, inflation problems should go away, should be transitory, we'll get that soft landing. And I kept saying, now, I'm, 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 there's a rotten fish in this whole story. Now listen to this new report. It's saying, well, actually, dude, the, 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 the inflation problem is actually based on a lot of things. There's an increase in rent, food, medical care, and these are one of the largest contributors to broad base. So this is across all types of inflation, right? That's wild. That's really wild, right? Broad base, uh, uh, and the food index continued to rise. We spoke about this last time. I said, look, watch oil, gas, fuel go down, and food still go up. I said it on the channel about a month ago, right? Food index continued to rise. Energy index fell. Um, um, energy, right? Oil falling. Energy index fell by 5% over the month as gasoline index declined, but the electricity and natural gas indices kept going up, right? So we've got a big problem, but it's hitting us across all sectors. And I say us like I'm in America, but don't forget, when the largest economies get hit, the smaller economies go on their knees first, all right? It's kind of like how it is. So my, my little brother is doing his PhD in global value chains uh, in, the, in the perspective of the fourth industrial revolution. When you read his research, it's, it's very clear right that that just because they you know when china sneezes over there we get COVID over here right it's just the same with economics so this stuff is absolutely important but 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 more importantly it transcends borders all right if you if, if you're if you're a nationalist and you just think you know put my country first you have to get out of that type of thinking to be a successful trader because borders are just a useless piece of territory identification this stuff is going to affect your pocket wherever you are, whoever you are. Now, check this out. So uh, I said through the report, I'm like, okay, fine, give me more, give me more. This column here is for August, right, which is what we're looking at at this latest CPI data. The CPI data that came out last week, Wednesday in September is looking for the month of August. So how, how all these reports work is there's a one-month rollover. The report I'll get today on the 17th of September, for example, is looking at the data collected for the month of August. That way, I'm looking at this thing in hindsight, and, and you know, and actually getting a guess a holistic picture that is no longer moving. Now, it is me, and I don't want to keep doing this, but it's absolutely important. I literally said it's in January and February and March after the first rate hikes in March, and then the next rate hike, I think it was in June or something. I say to you guys, the only CPI report 
that is going to absolutely matter is the one that's going to come out in September covering August after the Fed has arrived at a neutral rate. If you go through my old videos for full transparency, I say this is the report that's going to make or break the markets because once the Fed hits that neutral rate of 2.5%, a uh, 2.25, 2.50%, right? We should have arrived there on about August, September. And this is the September uh, CPI reading for the month of August. And this is what happened now for the month of for the month of August. Check this out. Food compared to the previous month has gone up. Right? Cool. Um, um, electricity, you know, fairly up there. Nothing has changed. You know, gas services were at negative 3.6%, short sky high, up. Uh, uh, all items, less food and energy, the previous month, July, right, 0.3, now 0.6, gone up. Uh, commodities, less food and energy from 0.2 to 0.5, gone up. New vehicles, I mean, there's even inflation on useless things. The Fed is trying to kill demand, guys. The Fed is destroying stock prices. He's trying to reduce the wealth impact. He's trying to say, stop spending. I'm going to take all your money. And here we still have people buying Lamborghinis and, and used cars, uh, new cars, old cars. It doesn't matter whether it's new vehicles, used vehicles and trucks. It's from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. From negative 0 0.4 to negative 0 0.1. All this stuff is going up, which sends a message to the fed there's a lot of money we ain't tight enough so for us to become tight enough we have to keep raising interest rates if we keep raising interest rates the equities market risk on markets have to fall we have i'm still bare if you you are still bare if you're part of this you are still bare we are bears we have to be because they there's still more pain coming more pain that CNBC won't report. More pain that your Bloomberg experts won't get. More pain is coming. Believe you me. Not financial advice, but I haven't been wrong since Jan. But that doesn't mean I'm right right now. <laughs> also, right. Medical care, right? Medical care got better. Now, as we keep scrolling down, services, less energy, da-da-da-da. And here's the big one. Shelter. Shelter is your rent, right? Why is this important? Remember... Um, um, shelter and where is it here? There we go. Previous month, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7%. Now, if shelter, specifically shelter, and I'm talking about rent here, right, it, 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 it keeps going up. The Fed has no choice but to raise interest rates, right? They're raising interest rates to tackle inflation. Now, what a lot of people never connect is the fact that while you're raising interest rates, and the thesis is you are attacking inflation, right? That actually makes housing more expensive, right? Because remember, when you buy a house from the bank, right, you have to pay at a specific interest rate. So housing becomes more expensive, which means purchasing housing becomes more expensive, which means it becomes more available to less people. And because of that, it drives the price even higher, right? Which makes renting more expensive now because you've got price of property going up, renting going up, it means the Fed, while trying to destroy inflation by raising interest rates, is creating a new set of inflation. It's a vicious cycle. All right. And again, playbook 2007, 2008, where the whole world acts like nobody could see it coming. All right. We're, we're doing the same thing again. Banks think in three months, take profit in a year, in a 10-year cycle. In a 10-year cycle, 2007, 2008, 2009, 10-year cycle came to an end a long, long time ago. Okay? Now, moving forward, if, 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 if you just take the time to read this report and they break a lot of things down, you will realize that, you know, things are quite bad, right? But once again, the inflation data does show that so far, yes, there was a peak at 9.1%, and then the next data reading that we had, was it 8.5%, right? That was the next one. And then this Wednesday, they wanted, I think, 8.1 or something weird like that. And we actually got 8.3%. So overall, there is a slow, deadly slow decline in inflation. It's not what the experts expected. And that's why the markets are kind of like, you know, you know, suffering, right? And so 
we are going to go back to what Paul said. Paul said we need several reports that indicate a continuous systematic decline of inflation. One report, two report is not enough, especially when one report indicates 8,5%, but then we don't get the 8,1 and we bounce back to 8,3. We are back to waiting for more. So we're now looking forward to the job numbers of, uh, of, of, I guess, you know, the coming month, right, for the next two months and the next two CPI reports. But we're going to hear what Paul's going to say, you know, this coming Wednesday, right? So all in all, I, mean, I just want to quickly check my notes. This is really what happened on Wednesday and why we had our beautiful sell orders. I mean, this was also my best trading week of the year. Swing setups that we've been waiting for played out. Indices clearly aligned with our currencies um, and the day trades were really over risk. Um, a, a calculated risk, okay, but, but a little bit inflated, right? But it paid off very well. So all in all, you know, thank you so much for watching all the time and just for being a part of this. And if you are taking the trades, um, don't forget to send screenshots, man. Let me know how, how it's going. This is good free money, um, right? So given all of this context in mind, right, I thought I'd go through a couple of things with you today um, in the trader's war room. Right. I thought I thought I'd look at a couple of very specific assets and maybe I should put them um, somewhere here on the on the whiteboard. Just give me a second so I can uh, uh, pull it up for you. Whiteboard. Uh, yeah, man. So maybe j just a very quick announcement. Don't forget to check out the link down below. Three, six, five trading academy. Hit that registration link. Join. Us, learn this stuff for yourself. Um, I'm literally doing this war room at about 1 a.m. And that's because I'm, I'm about to uh, travel to conduct another workshop somewhere else. But, but the point is, I might not always be there. So learn to empower yourself to take this type of trades. I mean, just by coming to war rooms, you know, you're very close to you. You're, you're one step further, right? So one more time, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better as a trader but do hit that link down below uh check us out and on the 4th of october absolutely crucial absolutely important i'm very excited i will be teaching weeks on end on trading psychology so this is something that you definitely want to check out uh on the 4th of october uh, a full course on trading psychology my module four then my module three and then we'll do a rundown of supply and demand module one to two so there'll be a lot of learning happening all the way from october to about december and anyone and everyone is welcome to join us just hit the link down below reserve your seat right before we shut that link down um, um there's a payment plan you know it, all sorts of beautiful things you know happening there right so for this particular war room folks we, we, we want to make sure we map things out correctly right so i'm going to start off with uh, uh you know the dxy euro usd nasdaq sp500 us 30 bitcoin ethereum euro usd and pound euro usd these are my very risk sensitive assets these are the things that i've been very 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 happy to trade the most they've also made me my most money longs on dxy sells on euro usd sells on the nasdaq s p 500 us 30 bitcoin ethereum i have literally been selling this stuff non-stop right and i'm very 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 you know happy what i want you to get from today's war room is while i map out the swings don't forget about my scenario analysis for day trading because when those two things come together, like right now, if you're a war room follower and you subscribe to this channel, you should be holding, even if you close the swings, uh, um, um, the day CPI data dropped at the end of the day, if you close the day trades, I mean, a lot of our swing trades were literally triggered at the same place our scenario analysis trades were triggered i know this because i use set and forget so when my pending orders get hit where i told you to put yours i expect that you are also making money with me right this is actually phenomenal right so as soon as we kind of like familiarize ourselves with the play on the dollar because remember if interest rates are to keep going up you know the dollar has a massive massive advantage against most of these currencies in the fact that the fed has been hawkish first although the fed has been very much behind and you know delayed i've said this over and over they have been hawkish first right so we expect to see a, a strong dollar right i am very worried or rather interested 
to see the overall long-term ECB reaction because we learned about two weeks ago that the Euro Central Bank now wants to be extremely hawkish too. Now wants to be aggressive with those interest rate hikes. So we want to see that balance. We want to see if there's going to be a shift in monetary dominance, right? Which FOMC, which ECB, uh, which BOE Bank of England wants to take center stage in this inflation fight. Remember, all of this is leading us to global recession, which will eventually lead us to a Western devil called depression, right? Economic depression, right? So after we look at, uh, you know, those pairs, and once again, kind of reminder, I'm doing my best to stay alive, stay energized, but it is 1 a.m. Um, 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 I, I might have to do it in two parts, we shall see, right? I'll, I'll then immediately look at USD CAD, uh, pound CAD, uh, USD JPY, AUD USD, NZD CAD, USD Swiss franc, Euro JPY, CAD JPY, and pound JPY. Right? So that's what's going to come next after we kind of like look at our very sensitive assets. Some of these things have negative correlations to, 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 to the first group, which is very important to trade. You need to understand correlating markets and you need to make sure that you deleverage yourself in the markets by not over trading the same correlating pairs because if you're wrong on one then you're wrong on all of them so you need to have a, a, a perfect balance a, a, a slight hedge in your trading strategy i'm going to teach on that stuff on the day trading series that is going to continue next week right if i'm still up with you still awake still recording uh in the ams and we're done with pound jpy and then the next assets that i want us to look at which would be our closing assets for the day or maybe part two that i'll film in the morning before i have to leave um will be um aud jpy nzd jpy euro pound uh um then gold silver usds are and palladium right so there's about a, a, you know, a, a strong 25 assets to look at folks for war room um I, I'm, I'm 80 you know some of the trades there's nothing to do some trades we need to just manage those trades some trades we need to look out for new entries etc we shall see um where this gets us right so without further ado let's start off with our first asset for the day which is obviously um the dollar right so the dxy chat let's see what's cooking there Right, so this is the dollar. Beautiful dollar, right? So you can see we expected a pullback a long time. This is guys, by the way, if you do hit that link down below and you do join, this is all I teach, right? My 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 classes, my lectures are very methodological, they're extremely structured in the course. You should be able with practice and right information be able to map out price as accurately as possible, like I've been doing for you to you guys you know in the past few weeks. Um, um and just the certainty that what you're doing works, right? So I'm actually very much happy to see the dollar play out here. We anticipated that once it popped, you know, this monthly supply there was gonna be a, a pullback. Obviously, you can tell I wanted the pullback to arrive all the way down there. It did not. Markets made an original turn. The news of a hot CPI, the fear in the market, and the pricing in of a Fed continuation of a hockey stance was too much joy for the dollar to handle. We can see this immediate explosion um, on the 13th of September, my little brother's birthday, which was this past Tuesday. So I keep saying this, but it was actually Tuesday, right? Where we, where, we, where, we, where we got the news and then markets, the dollar quickly recovered. But where's the dollar going? What's going on? Like So like, like I've said to you guys, I do expect the dollar to continue on this golden path upwards, right? I do expect that. Um, 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 and it's quite interesting to note that generally speaking, until, you know, a central bank gets a weird rate, like three, three to three comma five uh, a percent, right? And it, it might take a couple... For the dollar, it will depend. If the FOMC goes 100 basis point, then we're already at the three comma something. But if we do another 75 basis point, then we will be in the lower threes. But normally speaking, we have noticed that when when bank central banks get to higher rates, like three percent, four percent, then we start to see a slowdown of the currency, and that's naturally because what the interest rate hikes have been doing in the economy the economy is starting to catch up and react to that kind of stuff right but you can see here we've cleared a governing supply 
you know, this zone is, t is just marked now for my psychology, right? Just for me to know that we're inside a supply. But technically speaking, for all intents and purposes, this zone has now been broken. There are no supplies. Sellers have been completely extinguished, right? Yes, we could get a pullback for the most part, but a pullback would just be very much an opportunity to get this index on discounts, right? Um, you know, and, 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 and I really feel like the biggest fool. Like, I was so proud of myself for holding my three DXY buys for almost over a year. And when I closed here at the very first supply, you know, in hindsight, when you look back four, five, six months later, you can see that I could have been holding very beautiful long-term swing buys, right? But that's just how life is, right? So we can, I'm going to continue getting the small buy entries, you know, getting my risk-reward ratio of 1 is to 3, 1 is to 4, and then also looking for the perfect swings, which I actually haven't managed to get. When I say perfect swings, I'm talking about really low buys that I'm holding for months and months and months on the DXY. Ever since I exited, I still haven't managed to get those, right? So I was hoping that this would be the start of a perfect swing, that price would come all the way back down here. This is the weekly time frame. You can see that price is nicely, nicely, you know, very much sitting inside a bullish engulfment, which is actually the reason, you know, for the continued break of structure in price, right? So markets haven't come back there, but I'm going to leave my pending orders sitting right there um, in the event that price decides to fill, to come back, you know, and fill those orders. You can see right now, I didn't the daily supply when correctly drawn would look something like that, that this is a daily supply inside the dollar, but we, we, we do anticipate that this daily supply is already, you know, sitting on top of a broken supply. So sooner rather than later, we know it will be removed. And what happened with the news on Tuesday was markets created a new daily demand. And so this is now very much possible. Look out for that, right? This could happen. Uh, but, you know, with me, I'm going to play safe and wait for the lower demand, which generally speaking, for the last three months, according to my trading journal, is one of the main reasons I do miss out on even more trading opportunities, right? So one could to avoid that go very low on risk here but at least you're in and then swing and build onto that position um so 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 so, so that's kind of like the only play i'm seeing here on the dx on the h4 time frame you know maybe you want to just kind of like limit your your your, 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 your or better your r and r and kind of like reduce it to there but this double bottom here is not really my favorite thing to trade so I would really love a play all the way down there. I really would. I would prefer that. But we shall see if markets can can, can handle um, the sell pressure here, how serious that sell pressure is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I, I, I just couldn't do it, man. I, I really tried to, um, you know, push through in the AMs, but then had to travel. And I, I wanted to give you guys a good war room. So I'm continuing the early hours of the morning. Good morning. Uh, it's technically going to be edited in so smoothly, so you won't even know what I'm talking about, right? So let's just continue. Um, I was talking about the DXY. Uh, right, so, you know, this is the first chart we've done so far, the DXY has this, you know, situation where it is absolutely, um, I'm, I'm looking for some type of pressure. Um, you know, I was talking about how, well, we could be looking at some sort of pressure here eventually, all right? But for the most part, um, you can see that this is a strong dollar, you know, based on interest rates. I'm just quickly trying to gather my thoughts from where I stopped in the in the AM, ladies and gentlemen. You, I apologize, right? But anyway, dollar. Long story short, you know, we are looking for you know continuation to the upside. I think FOMC meeting will will, will do just that for us. Previously, you know, most FOMC meetings. I don't think I have them marked out on this chart, but pre previously, uh, the dollar does drop while Powell is still talking, and then what we get is a, um, an incredible reaction. You know, straight after that, right? So somewhere here uh, uh, in March, where we were the first interest rates, we had a weird day during the actual uh, uh, um, um, interest rate hike, and, and that pattern has continued, right? There will actually be a sell-off um, um, just before and during the talk, and then three, four, five, six, seven days later, we just had these explosive moments, and that's all we want to catch. We want to catch the next break to the upside. Want to catch the next break? To the upside and hopefully we get another uh, uh you know this week 
a slight slump, but down to kiss the next break to the upside. But that's the dollar. I'm looking at a strong dollar for, for, for a while. We have cleared a monthly supply after all, so there's not much there. Right, so the second asset of the day is our Euro USD. Second asset of the day is our Euro USD. Um, um, all right, so we're going to look at those swings, the swing charts, because I've done a good job at kind of like mapping out the scenario analysis, right? So this is kind of like where we've been on, on this situation, right? We spoke a lot about this, guys. Comprehensively, I showed you guys where all the 11 uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, opportunities lie, right, on Euro USD in the traders war room. I've shown you this chart so many times. I've explained to you that I will have a pin in order on each level because missing a swing as a swing trader is actually very, very painful because of how long it takes, right? So you can see swing number 11 price entered very quite efficiently. Um, and, and this was during the CPI release. And, and now we wait to see. Normally, we, we, we expect price to play at these levels for a little bit. You can see there until we get a new fresh break of structure right so you know that's really what i'm waiting for but this has been happening consistently for a very long time in euro usd for over a year right where markets will create a structure play that structure gather the liquidity if you watch my videos on buy side sell side liquidity and how that stuff works and then break down right so we've got a beautiful pullback there's always the danger of course of price wanting a higher sell-off it wouldn't make a difference because you know should have made enough money here as a day trader um, and I told you guys where to lock profits on the public telegram group. So if any of that stuff, you know, uh, does happen, you, you, you get your money, then you go wait for price at a better premium sell. But it's just a waiting type of week. Um, kind reminder, well, if the dollar goes crazy bullish, right, then we expect risk on equities to fall. Um, that's what we're expecting. If dollar goes crazy bullish, we expect, you know, risk equities to fall. So it, 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 it's that type of week, man. If you're not in these trades right now, unfortunately, there's not much to do because we've been very consistent in the war rooms in mapping them out, right? So, so what you can expect moving forward, however, is a potential retest of the zone, right? That's what you can expect. So somewhere in there, you could expect some 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 sell pressure to to start to you know ten price to the downside, um, and, and that's what's going to help. Um, um, so Euro USD, this is what I'm looking at. You can then do your multiple time frame analysis. You can then, you know, start to slice and dice and see what's going on in the H4 time frame. A beautiful mitigation right there. Dumb traders buying in and then being taken out, right? So you could be targeting this area. And I'm pretty sure it will be similar with your scenario analysis take, you know, during the week. Um, and then the next chart. Okay, so, you know, just look out for this, guys. But just a, a you know, <laughs> a heads up, right? This is an overly mitigated zone, all right? And what I mean by that is we've had our main supply that price came back to and left. We've had price dancing at that main supply for a while. So we've got glass effect. I acknowledge that there's a new supply by the shock, <laughs> right, of uh, CPI. Those who were shocked that clearly people are not subscribed to this channel because there's nothing shocking about this, right? But, you know, in my experience, sometimes these overly mitigated areas don't work. In my experience, sometimes they don't work, right? But for all intents and purposes, it does look like a valid supply. So, you know, risk appropriately, hoping for some, some, some of a, a sell downside. And then we can see. But if it doesn't work, then, you know, no matter you know, what we're, we're aiming at the top there. But you can see even on the daily time frame, we've got a very strong new structure that I just showed you on the Saxo broker. But it's the same thing. Very, very strong uh, a new daily supply there that should help facilitate the push of prices down. Right. You know, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter. I am, you know, a, a, a bear. Right. So, you know, if you check my scenario analysis, which I don't want to get into in this war room video because it will take so much time and I only truly have an hour left uh, to record as much as I can, um, which I don't think I'll finish all 25 assets, but I'll do a very good job. Right? You can see here on my scenario analysis chart, right? This is the cell that we took. Clean, perfect, you know, just mwah, excellent. Right. And, you know, some of you have exited. Some of you are still holding. Some of you have, 
locked profits just above, like I said. And inside here, these two white lines is this weak H4 demand, right? So I'm, I'm watching the weak H4 demand, right? And, you know, I, I made it as dramatically big as possible just to give price enough space to move about, right? But if we do get an inflection to the upside, you know, because of this H4 demand that I told you guys about in the public telegram group, once again, it's a free group, public telegram group, so do just get in, right? So you don't miss these things out. Um, then we can see a play into these areas, which is the same H4 zone that I've just drawn for you on the swing chart, right? Which starts there and ends all the way up there, all right? So, so, so please note that on the H4 time frame, price could turn a whole lot earlier here. But this is something you would look at as a swing trade, as a day trader. You really are looking for optimum price, right? So you want price to come all the way in there, which is highly unlikely, highly unlikely on an H1 time frame, right? This clean break of structure could be all we need right here. Okay. So so just be mindful of these small, you know, you know, you know price movements. The stuff that you need to learn to see, not stuff that I can accurately predict ahead of time right through change of characters you know all these things happen in a within minutes so you need to be able to read your levels you know quite accurately but for for for, for our swing trade idea i think we're clear there all right moving on is uh nasdaq um, what i'm going to do now ladies and gentlemen because of time and i do apologize is i'm going to do my level best not to to, to spend too much time on an asset right if an asset has already been covered well drawn uh and we're waiting or we just need to manage that's all i'm going to do i'm just going to tell you that you know as is keep it pushing right there we go there's our beautiful nasdaq you know dropping like it's hot let's go to the daily right we have complicated 365 patterns complicated 365 uh, uh supplies um it's a type of supply that we have in the academy if you don't know just look 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 down there right at the bottom of your screen it says register and join 365 trade academy so you know these things right so inside here we've got a new uh, uh, supply that's been you know you know created um um and, and technically speaking the one that triggered the downside movement is still very much intact right it might be time to now start to extend my long-term downward trend line might be time now to actually extend this white line here right? this very good faithful white line i have not taken a single trade because of a trend line i never trade trend lines you know trend lines are just merely confirmation tools but a powerful trend line is a trend line that is sitting like inside the pocket of a valid uh, uh, supply and that's what we've had so far right so I uh, remember this is a U.S. indice. I, I keep telling you guys that all the clues and secrets of the markets for these U.S. indices are generally nested inside the Asian session. If you want to understand what's going to happen on that day, just see what happened 12 hours ago, right? It's quite a complicated thing to explain in a short time, but I've done a video on that. We're looking at J225 or the Nikki, Nike Nikki 225, the Japanese index, right, for, for, for that kind of information. Right, so we've got an extension of our, our downward trend. We've got um, the CPI uh, supply on NASDAQ, and we've got this here, bright and early. This is where they could trap traders, right? This is just too easy, too good to be true, but extremely relevant, right? So, you know, don't forget, right? This was literally the whole inflation is going down. Everything is okay. Uh, markets making contact with the final demand, and then markets really went on to take uh, uh, a beautiful uh, 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 bear rally that I told you guys. That's what is happening here, right? So, you know, one is looking at this as a potential retake for a target over time uh, in the next week or so, given FOMC is this Wednesday, a push to that type of downside is very, 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 very possible. Uh, but this little supply here to me is not attractive. It's too close. It's halfway down the mark, right? So anything can happen. All right. I want to say that again, anything can pop at that particular supply. It is way too close. Um, that is to say they could break it just to facilitate this and then start to push price down. And this could be done by FOMC himself. He could say many positive things. He could talk about jobs as usual, right? And, and that always gives stocks, you know, some type of hope. He could say, well, maybe after this, actually we've realized inflation did not meet expectation, but it's actually going down. So maybe by the end of the year, we'll stop hiking again right he might say that again and then markets will be like oh at least he said we're going to stop hiking and price will push up you're going to get trapped right remember what he says and what he does are often two different things and you need to
to trade, don't get stuck in the hype, right? So you know me, during live events, zero trading occurs. Why? I like my money. I like my money. I like to keep my money, right? So I'm going to be watching and observing, right? But I do acknowledge that there's an area here, a very good area, potentially maybe for short-term day trades, but you can see by, by close of Friday, price was already trying to come back to this area, even on the one-hour time frame, where did this you know that has particularly facilitated this downward movement right but it's also left a couple of things here so the first thing that a lot of traders are going to be looking at is the 12 100 area which i assume if markets maintain a parabolic move might get broken right and and, and again you know i, I don't want to let me just check case okay, it's, it's not on my list today to look at but let me just quickly show you this chart right keep having a strong referral system with j225 right the moment you realize that markets are correlated and correlating markets talk to each other then that you can have a primary market and a secondary market once you understand that gig you know life is, is good right so this is uh, uh you know j225 my my japanese index i've got three sell trades in here i gave them all to you i told you when to sell in here i told you that price was going to come back and mitigate then it did literally the next monday of the war room or tuesday sir of the war room then i told you to wait for 28 this whole area look at this price came perfectly i posted this on the public telegram group and i told you guys on friday that if i don't manage to do a war room right to watch out for this area here why there's a strong daily ish demand there right that the, the, that is generally uh, you know rejected price in the past right and we could have some buyers here and if the buyers here are strong and markets actually move you can see the similar thing is happening here right there is a very close enough supply on the j225 uh, 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 Nikki, but if this supply breaks first, guarantee that other one on the Nasdaq is also going to pop. But if the supply holds, right, there's a high probability that it, the other one will hold, right? They might actually try and do a slight stop loss hunt, but price might fall uh, from there. So it's just based on how big the gap is to the market, if it's a gap to the downside. And if it's a gap to the downside, is it a no bias gap or a pro gap, right? A no bias gap could be just lowering buyers in or sellers, sorry, because it will gap down, but into a demand, right? So people will be like, oh, it's a gap down. Therefore, there's a lot of sell pressure. But sometimes you have to see where price is gapping towards. If it gaps towards a demand, it's lowering sellers when they know they want to buy. So you, you have to stay woke on these streets. Um, and the quickest way to do that is obviously to learn how to trade from Business 5 Trading Academy. I'm excited to kind of like really promote the academy towards the end of the year because the stuff I'll be doing on the 4th of October, no one has ever seen before. And I it's my only live class of the year. I might never do another live class. I used to do three a year. Uh, it used to take me eight weeks. Then I dropped to two. And this year I'm only doing one, but it's going to take me three months. Live means every weekday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and later on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for the next October, November, December, three months, I will be live on Zoom in a private class. The stuff won't be on YouTube, right? And we're going to hammer trading psychology like no man's business and then move into uh, smart money concepts. So that day trading series, right? All the secrets in there and then go back to my basics, module one and module two. So you really want to be a part of that, right? So NASDAQ covered, I hope, as I know I'm talking, um, but but I'm, try I'm trying to tell you that watch, watch out for this, right? Because money's going to move in this particular way, right? S&P 500, similar. You got that similar situation, all right? Unfortunately, I was in the second sale on the S&P 500. I'm still holding the first sale, so I, I didn't even bother to mark these zones. But if you look carefully, the S&P 500 gave an even better entry, right? You see here on the NASDAQ, it was, it was by luck that I drew out the complicated series. But on S&P 500, just clean, 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 right at the top there, uh, continuous down. So those of you holding this puppy, you know, all we need is for this area to be removed. And if it does remove, we will move forward. But what is interesting about the S&P 500, which is very important, is remember, we had a situation where I kept telling you that this and the SPY, right, is very important that this stays under, right, stays within bare market conditions and then obviously the fed kind of like acted like they were going to flip flop and you know reduce rate hikes and etc etc but we we want a, a, to maintain a 20 percent uh, well i want no not we i want right so right now market slightly close just missing 
that 20 percent uh bearish signal in the markets literally just missing it right 19 percent, right but if we get any other uh red candlestick close on monday tuesday wednesday this week under this where price is right now or even the removal of this demand that means the s p 500 will be back in bear territory which is a 20 percent drop since all-time high which will create more volatility more volatility will mean more uncertainty more fear and and you you, you should remember I, I give you all these tools all the time remember the vix the vix index is the fear gauge and it's actually technically linked to the s p 500 so as soon as we cross over to 30 on the vix index right see there that 30 mark there that means we're an all-time fear in the market it's about to go down uh, you know, the last time we above this thing was COVID a little bit, uh, you know, during the year with the war in January. And since then, you know, fears have been reducing the markets until recently, you know, from the 30th of August, when it became clear that maybe the Fed still does not have a handle on inflation. So what we want to monitor is something like this, right? If this happens and price has to trade above 30, that's very bad for the market, right? That means everybody's scared, everybody's dumping, everybody dumping means sell side pressure continues. Sell side pressure means, uh, uh, you know, the bears have got their jaws really, really, really clenched in this market and we're going down, right? So, you know, not much here to do on the S&P 500 once again. A clear new order block was formed on the daily. Once again, there's a, an interesting one right there, just outside the current active demand. And I would, I would, I would pay attention to these indices. I would, I, I would appreciate them for how similar they move, but in their minute, small differences, how easier they are to read. For example, S and P 500 has much more clearer, smaller tighter levels than the nasdaq 100 so if i can get a good enter on the s p 500 sometimes if you've got a small account you don't always have to care about trading the nasdaq right number one number two um, um you know you you can actually see that these indices move well you know in great correlation so master j225 get your us index pay and move accordingly right so um i didn't take a sell here because i already had one triggered or, or, or on on um on nasdaq but uh, you know in, in retrospectively this would have been a better trade you know in terms of risk to reward right so watch out for this same thing like nasdaq very very close supply outside the demand you know anything can happen on monday right you could get this and then this could be like a you know a city trap you know it's just a, a level that i really don't trust across the board right but it might work out on smaller time frames again time will tell right same similar situation on the one hour time frame We've got that completely untapped. Remember on NASDAQ, it looks tapped, right? Here on the S&P 500, it looks very much clear, untapped, right? So this could be a good trial. And then if it doesn't work, then you know they're, 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 they're going up, right? This is very important to understand, right? So next, outside of S&P 500, the next index we need to look at is US 30, the US 30 market. literally of 40 minutes left ladies and gentlemen uh, then then my driver will be in a panic i will not catch my flight i actually stay an hour 30 minutes away from the airport um right there we go beautiful right us 30 nice clean trade this has been just a pleasure to trade you know um using the fibonacci was the only way to kind of like time this thing well for me you can see nasdaq 100 tried its best to reach this area uh, a US 30 literally just below only you know smart confirmation of the Fibonacci would have worked S&P 500 made it all the way up there um, this, this is important like the 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 denunciation I'm making right now and the, the the attention to detail I'm trying to emphasize is again it will look like they all move the same but one of these indices moves even clearer right and right now s p 500 has that clarity right now everybody right now is stuck at this demand level here i'm talking about nasdaq s p and now look at what it looks like on us 30. once again us 30 was the lagger was the supreme lagger of all indices that is to say it struggled for us to it struggled to reach bear markets right we kept waiting for this thing to get the 20 percent below and it, i think it struck i don't even think it, it it actually ever did if i remember correctly i stopped checking at 17 percent right when the fed kind of like back walk 
right so let's just quickly double check where we are right now because remember if all indices fall below 20 percent and then that means all industries in you know in this u.s economy technically speaking a big chunk of the global economy is under pressure so right now say that 16 17 percent which is kind of like all the way here where price stopped last time and even where price stopped last time a couple of months back that was just 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 above uh, or, or rather below 20% or 19%, right? So anything, any break under my white line here, that's all I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for a red candlestick to close, just post this, and I'm going even more crazier because that means the markets have finally come, you know, to, to, to the unfortunate reality that price, more pain has to come. And I think that's what's going to happen. I do believe that's what's going to happen, right? Guys, if I don't finish this, I do apologize. I will have to make time to come back to it, right? I, I, I do apologize. I'll have to make time to come back to it. Um, but I've been booked, so I cannot miss uh, my flight. We are talking to a financial institution today, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday about this kind of stuff. But, you know, at, at, a, at a very much more, you know, obviously, deeper level. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to kind of, like, sit down with these people for the first time. Right, so there's Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin right look at that previous if you, if you it, 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 once you watch my video on you are liquidity if you don't know this your liquidity uh on our youtube channel then all these small uh you know videos or, or sort of these lines around drawing start to make sense right taking out buy side liquidity sell side liquidity the trick behind support and resistance and why it's not a good way to trade etc that's what happened with bitcoin broke out of this upward channel and then came back market memory and sold off there's not much to do right with bitcoin though you know, there is a lot of danger happening with Bitcoin. I, I really, man, it's, it's a dangerous thing because I want to say I'll make another video around Bitcoin alone, but I probably won't, right? I, pr I probably might get busy and I'll forget, but I also don't want to get stuck on it right now. Uh, but Bitcoin is, 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 is at an interesting crossroad. And if you don't know what you're doing, you will be in trouble, right? Really, all you should be doing right now is becoming a good trader. That's my advice. I'm not trying to market my course. You should be spending the, the, the next two to three months of your life, even registered students who already have access to my lectures, you really need to retake module one, module two, right? In preparation for what module three is going to do to your mind, right? And trading psychology. Because a good trader understands that cash is king right now. You want to be trading crypto over the weekends. You want to be looking for scenario analysis cells. So here's a test, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, in front of your life hack, all our indices have this supply, the one that's around the corner. But Bitcoin is going to trade painfully slowly through Saturday and Sunday, trying not to give the movement away. If this supply is broken by midnight tomorrow, Sunday, I don't know when you're going to see this video. I hope you see it before, you know, Monday morning, right? But if this supply is broken, then expect your NASDAQ and S&P 500 to also break that first immediate supply. But if it holds, if Bitcoin starts to sell today and tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, then you can expect Mondays to open up with big gaps to the downside. All right. It's the, that's number one. But in terms of just purely looking at Bitcoin from a crypto perspective uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to start a crypto program, not the wealthy in three years program, because that's an investor's program. Right. Uh, when we talk when we absolutely need to talk. I want to start a program when we look at crypto on a day to day. So literally uh, uh, buy and sell intraday signals on crypto um um because um, i've been back testing over 300 crypto currencies making sure my supply and demand is perfectly done i got done with that about two weeks ago by the way the the, the, the back test filled every single painful asset for my floor traders we're thinking of we, if we if i dump all of that on youtube it will destroy my algorithm right so there's something called you know information overload but i, I want to create a program around that stuff because there's a lot of money just spot trading cryptocurrency there's tons of money but here's a quick update on bitcoin over 33 billion worth of bitcoin entered the exchange uh, 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 last night last night being a friday the 16th of september I'm, I'm i'm doing part two here on a saturday morning friday the 6th of september 33 billion worth now any time any time any time there is that right I, I i always check the tape so i want to understand where this money came from if it's cash coming into the exchange i'm like okay all right big players i in. maybe they want to trade maybe they want to mess around that's fine but if it is money 
that is being transferred moved from cold wallets, right? I, I immediately I go even more bearish. Most of the time, I'll go 80%, 90% of the time, when money that size, that magnitude is transferred from cold wallets, this is very important, don't zone out. I know there isn't fancy pictures and I'm not moving around, right? I can doodle if you want. But I'm saying to you, if money from cold wallets is transferred to exchanges at the same time in the verb, I mean, this is between the 7th of September, right? And if you think about it, this is pre-CPI, you know, watching CPI, during CPI, and the last day, the 13th, when CPI dropped. So, so between the previous Wednesday to CPI Tuesday, 33 billion US dollars worth of Bitcoin have, have come from cold wallets to spot markets. And this is generally often an indicator of intent to sell, right? So there is sell side coming. There is a whole lot. I mean, there, there, there's so much to talk about crypto, you know, if we, and, and I want to make time for it and I should. But often, you know, it, it just so, you know, sell pressure might become as a big indication. Supply will end up being higher than demand, which can lead to a steep drop in price. Just like Euro USD with Bitcoin. I sat down with you guys and I told you guys time and time again that this stuff is predictable and this stuff moves. This stuff moves in very, very, very predictable. Remember, I did a video on this stuff, on the upward structure, the break, how many days it takes. We calculated that there's so much, so much similarity. These little upward structures are going to keep breaking down. And you can see, I've already mapped out the next stage of the full breakdown and the next, and we're going all the way down to 12K, 10K, right? And then somewhere down here, the, the, the debates will start. But please note that Bitcoin is approaching some steep sell pressure. We don't know when it will strike, but it will. But it will, right? It will, right? I, I did all of this thing for you guys. I did the, the 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 ghost feed. I did the fact that we need, to, generally speaking, an eight to an eighty-five percent drop uh, in crypto during a real bear market, right? To get this is the people who are following the stuff. You're gonna be rich. If you can keep dollar cost averaging number one right now, if you're part of my wealth in three years, even better, because then you should have uh, all the old and new, um, uh, and by new, I haven't dropped a new financial note in a while. Please don't email me saying you didn't receive it. I haven't dropped one yet. So if you're part of wealth in three years, remember the rule is I only send those out when I am about to take on new projects. When I don't send anything out, you should be dollar cost averaging in the stuff that I've given you, right? But when price gets down here, my brother and sister, the steep competition we're going to face is going to be incredible. This is going to be the rug race, the rug race to, to, to riches where institutions are going to come down and potentially even crush price even further to 8,000, 9,000. But this is the golden opportunity to get rich. And I mean, filthy rich, if that's your thing. Right, but money will be made here, right? So please, my videos are important. Um, um when this stuff happens, you know, it, uh, most of my stuff will be very much automated. I'm a sit and forget trader, anyways. But I thought I'd bring this up on Bitcoin, right? That 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 you know, yesterday on the tape, just before market close, I noticed I found that interesting that there's a lot of money that just you know fluctuated the markets, right? We just had the ETH merge, ETH merge complete, completed it flawlessly. Right, this is supposed to literally be a better type of Ethereum. I'll, I'll, I'll cover this, no problem. Look at it, dumping, dumping, because traders think good news is good news in the markets. Right, there's an old, old school uh, 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 rule. You always um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, um, buy the rumor, sell the news. You know, you buy the rumor, you sell the news. When the news comes out, you sell. Why? Because if you expect it to happen, then there is no uncertainty, therefore no volatility, number one. Number two, if the, the event is overhyped, then it is already priced in. All right? Everybody thought this was going to, you know, rock the world and go to the moon. No, supply and demand. We are all holding cells from our previous war rooms. I hope we are. I hope we are. Right. So Ethereum is already cleared at demand. Ethereum levels are much more crystal clear to read than Bitcoin levels. There's more new ones to the order blocks in Ethereum. It's a beautiful thing to pay attention to because if you remember, Bitcoin, Nasdaq, S&P 500, US 30 have some silly supply all the way there. Ethereum has a clear structure way above a demand and has taken out this demand. This demand is gone. It was taken out in the early hours of this morning. Right? So now all we need before Monday is to remove this red zone. And baby, money, money flow it. 
money cometh to me right so keep pressing your sellers right so i've already done bitcoin and by luck i've done ethereum there's not much for me to talk about except for what i've spoken about right if you are new and you're not in the previous swing trade then you are competing now you're competing for lower sales so good luck to you all right you really should have been with us at the higher sales here we are swing traders in war room so we hold our trades we hold because we understand where price is going. I hope you're with me here. If you're an intraday trader, then you're going to have to be looking for setups during the week that coincide with the overall trend. Jesus, I've got 30 minutes left. Ah, man. Right. So, Euro USD, I've done. Ethereum, I've done. Uh, so, the next one is Pound USD. Let's look at Pound USD. Good, good trade and pound USD. Just, just good money all around, guys. You know, we marked the zone out. I marked it out for you in the war room. Clean tap, man. I mean, this is what I mean when I say join 365. This is the type of sales we should. So hold this and now hold this. Hold this and hold this. Hold both your sales. But look at the governing time frame. That's the most amazing part about the pound. The pound is literally the, the, the revelations. <laughs> it's like, yo, end of times, bro. There is no governing structure. There's none. It's there green just for, for for the sake of you know chat work but it's gone they took out a governing demand this is not i mean in my lecture when i when i when, when i'm teaching you guys about a, a module my, in my module one master the basics course it is fundamental that the first tweaks of those lectures in module one you understand them because what has happened now is a major turning point has been taken out in a cell profile asset oh no it has not been taken out i apologize okay so a big demand of the 2020 market crash has been taken out and now we are about to go challenge a major turning point right so these two white lines here actually demarcate the last line of defense for the pound right again a lot of traders did ask you know we're quite clear about this you know the queen's death means nothing to most africans but also technically speaking means nothing to the markets right I mean, there's there's nothing really that uh shocking about a 96 year old lady you know you know you know knocking on heaven or hell's door um you know depending on whatever you believe right so 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 so, so this is it right so euro usd pound usd same sequence right there is a the, the, the flimsy supply close by to 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 the close on friday right same everything all these risk sensitive assets like i said are moving the same way all right so pound usd if you're not in it you know uh, and by the way all these trades right i'm showing you where you should be taking new entries i'm showing you where you should be break breaking even locking your trades up etc etc because very soon we're going to need management very soon we're going to need to see some strong retracements which will not end the downtrend they will just be strong retracements they will not end the drown downtrend right and this is going to be fueled by what uh uh, uh powell says this is going to be fueled a lot by what Jerome Powell says, right? So look out for that. Next chart, USD CAD. What's going on? Sorry, guys, two seconds. I feel like I've you've lost me or I've lost you or I've lost something. I've hit something. Have I hit something? Sorry, sorry. Give me two seconds. I don't know what's going on. What's going on, man? All right, cool. I pressed something. I don't know what it was. But I think I'm back. Right. So the next, the next chart, uh, as quickly as possible, USD CAD. Trying to get signals from my team. Thirty minutes left. <laughs> uh, the panic. The panic. Right. There we go. USD CAD. Right. So you know, strong dollar. You know, we're not too 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 surprised here. Nothing, nothing can like if you look at the DXY and you look at USD CAD, you'll be surprised at the beautiful correlation that exists. All right. Um, generally speaking, if I look for if I see a good setup on the DXY, I try and find a similar setup on USD CAD. Right. It's a beautiful pro tip. It works most, if not all the time. In fact, I can't remember time it does not work. Right. So we are in in a in, in a weird moment, right? Uh, this is a governing time frame, governing supply, and you can see. I'm pretty sure you understand what's about to happen. DXY is a primary market. It's broken its supply. Why wouldn't USD CAD break is, right? Remember I showed you guys this on the public telegram group. I showed you the currency index. Look at the CAD. I see this, this is the Canadian dollar currency index. Weak, all right? I, 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 like, no, I don't think, you know, anything is gonna happen here. This is quite weak. 
And because of that, I, you know, I expect price to fall. I, it's just an expectation. I have, I have high expectations for the complete destruction of price here. All right, so this is something to, 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 to think about and consider. You know, just really, 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 really focus. Because if CAD remains weak and dollar is going to keep going strong because what the FOMC is going to do, then it's an obvious bit that, you know, we should be buyers on USD CAD. I, I hope you guys understand how I got to that conclusion. CAD is weak, dollar is strong, right? Obviously, with CAD, you need to also factor in Mr. Crude Oil. And Crude Oil has got the whole world tripping. I saw them again. They started with their silly news articles, right? They started with their headlines. They started with their, with their stories. But we we expect oil to remain low. I mean, in the first part of this uh, our war room, right, I broke down CPI data for you, right? This is There's nothing going on in oil. Well, oil, yes, I think yesterday on CNBC, there was an article about oil going back to 150. Yeah, okay, sure. You're trying to get people to be trapped in longs, right? No, wait for it. There's a potential weak demand in oil right here, somewhere there, which I'm not yet that convinced about. And then I'll see oil down here. So between 77 and 60 US dollars per barrel is a landing space for oil. But until then, oil is down, CAD is down. So USD CAD strong buy. Someone who's smart wrote that down. Because at some point in time, you need to have organized notes on market correlations. It's never going to just come to you. There are some things, ladies and gentlemen, that you cannot Google. There are some things you cannot Google. There are some things that no one in the internet will teach you, especially my course. You cannot Google the stuff in my course because a lot of the stuff in my course is based on my specialization. My specialization is a researcher, the job of a PhD possible highest degree is to say something new about your field. So a lot of the stuff that I put into my trade, a lot of the stuff that I put into my research is fundamentally stuff that is out there, but is not easily accessible in terms of the know-how, all right? That's why not everything is Googleable, right? You must go to the source, right? And right now for 365, that's currently still me and will most likely be me until 2030, right? Because I have a rollout program for this kind of stuff. So please take me on this, right? The, the, the market correlation stuff that I, I, I spit out, try to have an organized notebook where you write this stuff down, right? Where, 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 where someone will actually break this stuff down for you. I know I'm in a rush today, but it's actually very important, right? So let's break this down. Weekly time frame, bullish and golfing inside the supply, very aggressive, very, very aggressive bulls. Right, you know, it doesn't mean anything. You know, we've seen some bullish engulfments inside supplies being wiped out by bullish engulfments later on. But this is very aggressive, right? This is literally um, 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 uh, a big, 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 big signal that price wants to dump, right? So there you go, bullish, bearish, right? So, so markets are pushing up, uh, and then on the daily time frame, we've got a, you know, a demand just outside. The proximal line of the supply as markets move up and you know we've got a couple of daily supplies that have already marked out in this area here you know all these zones that i've drawn are probably from lower time frames just pretty much you know painfully staking exactly where price lies right so there we go there you see you've got this moment here strong imbalance tap and price continue to fall and now on the other side markets making their way aggressively now again you know it's been the year of the cowboy traders, right? So normally I would say, do not take this order block, it's too close. Uh, but you know, there've been times where price has surprised me, right? You can see here, there's a step in ladder of buy order blocks, uh, you know, you know, tapping the previous one, creating one and then imbalanced and coming back in and then creating another one, right? So it's safe to say it's a reasonable area to take a risk, but I don't like them because I'm old school. And old school Leroy will tell you that back in the day, um, 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 they used to take these ones out very quickly because they were just in front of a lot of sell pressure. But the imbalance is very strong and good. There is clean break of market structure. So it could work. It really could work. But if it doesn't work, you know, then space your, your entries out, right? So one of these will hold, right? So, but just wait, you know, the smarter trader, I, I would prefer for price to first pop the supply then come back. I would prefer for that. I would prefer for that. And remember, we still can anticipate a few downward pressure on the DXY, just a little bit, maybe while FOMC speaks, uh, um, um, just to facilitate a better, strong down, uh, uh, you know, this downward pressure to, to mitigate this order block all the way down there, right? So, you know, that would be nice if, if we got that, but we're not yet sure if we're going to get that. 
We're going to be prepared for everything because we're going to put our pending orders in risk appropriately. You're not going to make money off one big trade. What you're going to do is you're going to make money on a consistent basis of risking what you can, you know, uh, what your account can handle and racking up a good risk to reward a, a ratio to keep you trading. The more you trade appropriately, according to a good risk to reward measure, the more you make up overall, right? You should be focused on percentage gain, not profits. But we will deal with this stuff on the 4th of October. We will deal with all this stuff on the 4th of October. Uh, just make sure you're registered by then. Uh, and by the way, if you register now, like literally sometime in September, you get access to module one and module two immediately, right? It's not like you have to wait until the 4th. If you get registered now, you get eight weeks of pure gold lectures right now that you actually need to get started on so that what I do on the 4th of October sits with you even better, right? Right, so pound cat is the next one. Why pound cat? Just so you know, pound cat is a negative correlation, um, 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 is a negative correlation to a couple of things. Someone is calling me while I'm trying to make, ah, Mr. Domini, you wouldn't know this, but you're actually calling me in the middle of, um, of uh, uh of my war rooms um sorry i'm just going to try and hang up the call oh shame I, I hope you heard me i hope you heard me right so right i didn't know instagram just automatically answers calls that's weird right sorry about that guys right so pound cat let's go okay this is pound cat on the governing time frame we've spoken about this we're digging deep we're digging deep we're digging deep and you remember in every single war room that I've done, I've been wanting to sell this and maintain the sell pressure, right? As long as pound is weak, and we know pound is weak, we really want to keep pushing with the sell sides, right? Now, I'll say this this, is a, this has got a 79% negative correlation with AUD JPY, right? I'm going to make a follow-up video when I get back home on Monday, on Tuesday, sorry, around scenario analysis stuff. And when you guys see all my scenario analysis pairs, you'll realize why it's absolutely important to have pairs that negatively correlate with the stuff you're trading. And pound cat is my favorite thing to trade for, for AUD JPY, right? So there's a negative correlation there. So if AUD JPY is going up, I'm selling pound cat, right? And I'll explain that stuff later, right? But unfortunately, the last time I took a trade on this thing, right? It was good direction, but unfortunately got charred, right? Stop loss hunt. And, and this, is the, this is the thing that I always worry about, right? When price has multiple glass effect stuff, right? It's amazing how even the theory, no matter how long it has, it still proves itself true, right? So I remember definitely being, you know, stopped out of this and I just never cared to go back, right? Because again, in theory, while there were many supplies and check this out, because I, maybe you don't want to be like me, too conservative. That supply worked. It was there. That supply worked. All these supplies, I, I just can't take them because my rule book tells me do not take sales in the middle of a big demand, right? You never know where price is going to turn against you. So far, those who took risk on these supplies made enough money because markets haven't turned against them drastically enough to hit a stop loss, right? Markets have been dropping consistently. So, you know, it, 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 it's actually interesting to see, you know, some of these things play out. But right now on pound cat, if you want to know what I'm doing, I am waiting for price to, 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 to be done with the downside. So, you know, intraday, I don't mind trading it, but a swing trades, not touching pound cat until we pop, you know, this little balloon here, break the demand. And then look at it, looking at my previous, you know, you know, break of market structures, I will pretty much be eyeing this area here. I'll pretty much be eyeing to take a strong sell position somewhere there only after that demand has been broken, right? So it's something to kind of like think about and consider. But once again, I'm marking it now on the premises that I would prefer the, 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 the governing demand at least to be weakened even more. So maybe an 80% weakening. And how do you know 80% Leroy? You can do a supply and demand curve that I teach you guys in module two, or you just wanna see more sell pressure inside this demand to burn out the buyers, right? And then if price was to return up there, I would definitely take a sell. If price was to return up here, I'll definitely take a sell. Um, I don't know if this is at the end of the road for pound cat. It looks like it is, right? So we're looking at, no, it's not. So just like pound USD, there is a lower demand nested, a major turning point nested. And that's where I would want us to go back to 1984, right? What started it all? Okay, so that's pound cat, uh, USD JPY. Next is USD JPY. 
Oh man, I've got 15 minutes left and I have to love and leave you. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this war room. I will catch up with the other other assets, right? There we go. There's my baby. I told you guys about this monetary policy divergence. We've been clear about it. We've been clear about the BOJ. I did map out a sell supply. I did not tell you to sell it. I just told you to look out for price pressure there to the downside because we want to see the rejections, which happened. That's on the weekly. And we want to see price hopefully move slowly down into our buy side. Right. So this is an H4 trend line, right? I know it looks weird on the daily, but on the H4, it makes a lot of sense. I've drawn this trend line because I'm waiting for it to break. If markets were to break this H4 trend line, I definitely would as a short term trade. As an intraday trade, as a couple of one or two day intraday trades, as a day trade off, you're definitely looking to, 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 to catch a little bit of this. And this is actually in correlation with what we just said. We do expect just as another one more, you know, you know, you know, appropriate dip on the DXY. I just showed you an appropriate dip on the USD CAD. So if we could get an appropriate dip on the DXY, we could break this H4 trend line. Um, 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 and then if we do that, then that would be great. Uh, I don't think price would make it all the way down there. You know, if it does, awesome, because that's really where I want to buy, right? I, 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 I would love to buy, you know, all the way down here or, 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 or on this particular chart. But, um, you know, it, it, it could be a dream, right? Markets could just simply stop here. Right. The only the only reason why I've slightly more faith is because price has not got done removing the entire supply. And so we do know that it still exists some sell pressure on the governing uh, mayoral and also on the day. Right. So we could get that thing uh, pressure. Great. So this is a chart to look out for, you know, during the week. Of course, if USD JPY falls, right, then you can expect pound USD uh, and pound cash to be doing something very interesting to, 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 to have a good day, right? But I'll explain correlations in another video, right? So that's USD JPY. I'm looking to buy, but I might take some risky short term sales to the downside if I get all the type of confirmations I'm looking for during the week. AUD USD, next chart. Right, so far, guys, just so you know, I've broken down CPI, I've broken down indices, we've done 13 assets. So if I do stop, right, this has not been bad. It has not been a bad war room, right? Everybody should be in this, by the way. It's a clearly long-term, you know, mark. We've been waiting to get back into AUD, USD for a long time. Like, there was never, I, 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 it was one of those charts that I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. Thought price was going to come back here, did not. Thought price was going to come back there, did not. Finally got triggered. Thank you, CPI. Um, and so now it's just a situation of holds, protecting holds, protecting hold, right? So you should be managing your trades, thinking of breaking even, thinking of letting it, letting it fly loose for a little bit. But ever, you know, normally when there is a new order block like this, you know, that's formed, it's probably a smart idea to break even. If you want to go back to 5% risk, then set a new pin in order here, but have your, your runners run. Some of you want to take profits. I understand, you know, you know each to their own. There is that um, interesting level, right? So I, I, like I say, just watch Bitcoin, Ethereum this week and how they deal with these first supplies over the weekend because this will be a good indicator to how markets will deal with them during the week, right? ADUSD, same as all the other assets I've done there for you guys. NZD CAT. So NZD CAT is the next one. I'm, I'm, I know for a fact I'm not buying. I, I, I do not have an NZD CAD buy. So I don't know whether I forgot to put a pin in order or I just chose to wait and see. But right now I'm not in any buys, right? I, yeah, definitely don't like anything here on the left. There's nothing here that is like, oh, Leroy, this is a great trade. Nothing, nothing on NZD CAD um it, it is 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 exciting for the buy so this is one of those wait and see markets uh um you know nzd cad for me would be just important to observe because it correlates a lot with aud usd right 85 percent but more important if ad if nzd cad starts to buy up you know then i know for a fact i should start selling my usd swiss franc right but once again I'll do these market correlations with you, right? So I'm not really looking at this. This is way too choppy for me. It's not my cup of tea. If price was to break above this level, then sure, I'll start to look for swings to the downside later on, right? Uh, and then if price was to negate down there, I probably still wouldn't buy, right? So unfortunately, I don't like this chart. So I'm doing nothing on this chart except for watching to understand what the rest of the market is doing. 
But that being said, I'll be watching NZD Cat to make a good decision on USD Swiss franc, right? Which is really um, a good one. Remember, we wanted to sell here and markets tagged us last week. And I wrote only sell it, the DXL is selling, the DXL was selling. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. What I did notice is what this was a bias retracement. And I hope you guys know the difference, right? You can see here golden ratios where price does to sit. They tagged the barcode area. And and so I, I don't expect much. This is one of those trades that, you know, I, I should have told you guys, but I did keep saying to everyone, please manage your trades. I won't have time. But this I closed, right? Because, you know, on Friday, price was already here, right? And sure, markets might hit that and drop again, but I'd rather kind of like, you know, keep some profits, right? So what, what we do have, again, is an interesting phenomenon because we've got a supply and then we've got a creation of a new supply in the supply. Again, I don't trust these setups, but it could work. Um, the risk very minimum, very, very minimum here and do the same thing we did last week. Only take this trade if DXY is falling, right? This is very, very important. If the dollar is strong, then this is going to break. It's already marked red. Then maybe we can start to talk about, you know, price um, somewhere there, right? Unfortunately for me, no buys were triggered in this area. Uh, uh, no significant buys anyways. You know, I really wanted price to come a little bit lower. Uh, which had, you know, and retrospectively was a, maybe a bit dumb, right? But anyways, it's nice to catch the sale, right? So watch out for this uh, uh, particular area. Price stopped trying to create um, 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 lower highs here. Prices stopped creating lower lows, all right? So this to me is just another confirmation that a strong dollar is brewing. A strong dollar is brewing, right? So that's why I got out of the sale. And if you're in it, Look, man, when markets open Monday, just close uh, or break even or, you know, you know, make up your own mind. But I'm just telling you what I've done. I don't trust this because some of the trades I had to know I had to manage because I won't be active in the markets on on Monday as I'd like to be. All right. Euro JPY. Right. This has been a long time coming. All these red zones. Right. And, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, price broke. Right. I originally got burnt all the way down here. Remember, I expected price to stop here, right? Which is quite silly, right? Because you've got monetary policy divergence between the two. But more importantly, it's only about last week where the ECB just became extremely hawkish out of nowhere. They're like, yeah, we're going to go 75 basis point and maybe go 100 next time, yada, yada, yada. Right? So that's given the euro a lot of power, right? So I got burnt on the sell there. I haven't bothered going back, uh, you know, to, to take trades. And maybe it's now time to remove... Uh, all these zones because they make this whole thing look ugly now and maybe start to plot the way forward, right? So we know that ECB has started pumping and any time a currency becomes hawkish against the yen that is extremely dovish, we expect that currency to be extremely strong, right? And so it was just one of those things where I knew what was going on in the euro, but just forgot to come change this chart, right? But yeah, once I got burnt here, I didn't care. Technically speaking, price hasn't come back to give us a uh, a good buy, a good buy into uh, um, the zone. But you can expect the same thing uh, that we saw on USD uh, JPY, you know, very strong bullish momentum up until the Bank of Japan, you know, starts to show some teeth, which might be this October or might be never, right? But um, on the governing time frame, I'm just trying to clear some areas of value now that we lost a trade here. Uh, you know, imbalance kind of great, but not the best, right? So, you know, you know, this is this is a real possibility between 2022 uh, uh, two up until 2023. This is a, a strong possibility for Euro JPY. Um, I would become a strong bull on this chart. This is something to take notes of. I would absolutely think it's prudent to become a strong bull. You can see inducements happening, smart money taking out equal highs. I would become a bull here, right? So on the daily time frame, if you were to look for some buys, I would go at Kinihashi. Um, and yeah, this is quite consistent, right? This is quite consistent. This is quite consistent, right? So this is something to, to kind of like consider. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got five minutes left before my driver quits on me. Um, actually doesn't like that i make him speed sometimes right Got, gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go gotta go right uh by the way if you want me to come to your city let's start off with south africa let's start off with south africa let's start off with south africa i am happy to travel in south africa and outside of south africa so south africa if you can find uh, uh, uh at least a minimum of 10 people i'll come i'll come do a day workshop and then we can start an eight-week program 
on 365 stock. And if you're international, um, we, we will probably have to do 20. So we have to do double. Right? If you can find 20 people to, 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 who, are, who are ready and serious and want to get registered, but also want that in-person touch, I'm happy to come, take care of my boarding and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll come, right? So internationally. So this is something to kind of like consider. Yes, I know I generally always travel for corporations, but you know, I got thinking that wouldn't it be nice to just do this for people, like individual retail traders? Like, you know, 20 people, you all get registered at the same time and you say, look, man, please come. I, I, I promise you I will come. I will come uh, at least get the ball rolling in person so we can sit down, you know, this is five foot book out uh, a venue or a hotel or a conference center somewhere, I would come. I really would. So drop us an email if that's what you want to do, right? Um, um, email me at head trader uh, at 365 trading academy. Uh, Someone will respond to that if it for most likely me, I'll forward it to someone to respond anyways, and they'll, they'll, they'll sort you out, right? I just can't remember the other emails right now, right? But I would come. In South Africa, if there are 10 serious people who want to get started, and maybe, you know, people with forest have trust issues, it real, you know, is the person even there? Uh, da, 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 I'll come. I'll come if there are 20, 10 serious people who register and they say, look, man, could we start this thing off one-on-one? -on -one? In Grahamstown, I'm here. I will come. I'll come. If, if you can get 10 people, we start the process one-on-one -on -one and then we continue uh, uh, with it online, uh, et cetera. I will absolutely travel for you, right? Because I've been traveling a lot for corporations, right? But it's like these guys have already have an edge. They already have more money than you. They're using this information in my research to better themselves. Why not give this to the people? Right, so uh, this will take one person in a group to, to actually steer ahead this, find the 10 people, let me know that they're serious, register, and I promise you, we will make a plan to come there. Right, so I'm gonna stop here at Euro JPY. I would be interested to see how this plays out. I'd love to see how this plays out because, uh, you know, with the hawkish ECB, which is what happened this past week as well, you know, this week was insane, hawkish ECB, uh, um, 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 crazy inflation data creating a crazier, you know, FOMC. Who knows, right? Three, six, five, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I respect you. I thank you for your time. We stopped at Euro JPY, which was asset number 16. So, in my next video, before I do scenario analysis, I'm going to do CAD JPY, pound JPY, AUD JPY, NZD JPY, Euro pound, gold, silver, USD, and palladium. Take care. God bless. Peace.